Good morning, and welcome again. Diane Sawyer with Chris Cuomo. Great to have you here. Robin Roberts is taking this week off. Hope she's getting a lot of rest. And coming up in this half hour, we're going to start, we're going to launch our new series. It's called Five Things You Must Know. And we're going to start with the one that says really five things that could change your life, yes. ways to begin changing your life. And our friend Kathy Preston's going to be along. Among other things, a diet even Oprah is trying. Yes, and what's nice about it is not big things, little things, little things you can do that can lead to a big difference. Now, our friend Sam. And the, the whole team in Gainesville coming up next, the five things you can do to be happy right now. Why not start right now? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. It is time for her to kick off our new series, Five Things You Must Know for a Happier and Healthier Life. We've called on best-selling author Kathy Freston to put us on the road to happiness with a simple self-makeover from her new best-selling, Quantum Wellness, a practical and spiritual guide to health and happiness. Very nice to have you Thank here, Kathy. Thank you for having me. Great title. Had to look it up. Not going to lie. Had to look it up. <laughs> Quantum is a great word that you use specifically. Mm -hmm. Why do you use it? Well, quantum really talks about how you can do uh, small, almost unseen steps and get huge, magnificent results. And it's the idea of literally leaping from one place to another, and you don't necessarily feel the change as you go. So it's that idea of really making huge changes, but only doing very small, unseen steps. You literally will take a somewhat of an exhale of relief when you start reading the book, when you realize yeah. this isn't another book telling you to make some wholesale, <laughs> big deal difference uh, in your life. And it's very interesting. You say, of course, little steps, inclusive steps, mind, body, spirit. We'll right. talk about that. The first thing that you lay out in the book is the cleanse, 21 days mm -hmm. of removal of things. Take me through mm -hmm. it. Well, the cleanse diet is something I do for 21 days, and I suggest that people do it for about uh, maybe one to three times a year. Mm -hmm. And you know how sometimes you just want a fresh start? Yes. And you feel like you're in a rut, and you just want to clear the slate and start all over. And this gives you the opportunity to do it. So you, you cut out alcohol, sugar, caffeine, gluten, and all animal products. And so that's all very good for your health. It, it allows your body to do the deep cleaning, uh, just getting rid of old toxins and everything like that. But also there's a sense of, of um, relief and a sense of a, a fresh start and a new beginning when you just clear the slate for 21 days. And it's nice. Within the book, uh, Kathy goes through why each of these is mm -hmm. necessary for removal. So you get your why if you're somebody who's going to question it when you're told. Yeah. But also, they are easily done things. It's manageable. Yeah. You know, it's not one of these radical diet ideas. And we were joking around about Oprah uh, being on the diet, yeah. but this is a woman who invests in intelligence. Right. You know, so it's something to be taken seriously. Now, right. in terms of the continuum of care, mm -hmm. mind, body, spirit, meditation, mm -hmm. a valuable tool. Why and how? Meditation is really quite easy. It's only uh, closing your eyes for, for even a minute. I call it a mini meditation. I just close my eyes and I breathe 10 breaths and just counting the breaths and what that does is it slows down your entire nervous system shifts your brain chemistry so you get all those feel-good happy hormones going and all the chemistry is is um, completely different and you get very creative and very inspired and you respond to your day in a different way when you meditate and literally you don't have to go anyplace special or or uh, have an altar or anything like that just close your eyes and do 10 conscious breaths a very important thing because we know medically that anxiety is greatly mm -hmm. self-induced. It's greatly triggered by your breathing. Right. So why not try to modulate it a little bit yourself? Right. Also, an interesting concept in this book that you don't really usually connect to wellness. Yeah. Not about you, about what you do for others, helping yeah. others. How does yeah. that fit in? Well, I say that, um, that uh, selflessness is the new selfish. So <laughs> Very good. <laughs> actually, it feels good to us when we do something for someone else. And I know whenever I get, uh, if I get in a rut or I'm depressed, I, I, I realize that I haven't done anything for someone else for a while. And so I push myself out and I go volunteer at an animal shelter or homeless shelter or something like that and I find myself feeling good I, I realize that I have something to offer I see the happiness that it brings uh, the animals or someone else that I'm helping and so 
I start feeling good about things, but also I've extended that good feeling mm. past myself. And that's what quantum is all about, is going past the concerns of just me and pushing out into a wider environment. And literally, the reason I like the word is when you look at the science behind it, the Planck theory of it, I know it's science, but yeah. the smallest possible thing that can create a change and, it, and it works for you. Yeah. And something that you help is you back up in this book also and you say, visualize it, see mm -hmm. what you want to happen. How mm -hmm. big is that? Well, that's really, uh, that's, that's creating the framework, the structure of a shift in your life. Because, you know, sometimes we don't even realize that we have the same negative thought patterns going round and around from childhood, from negative experiences or trauma or whatever. And sometimes we just need to jolt ourselves with some new ideas, some new um, behavioral systems going on in our mind. So I just say, close your eyes, visualize your life as you'd like it to be. And it sort of creates a map for the day, a map for your life to unfold and it shifts the circuitry and how you feel about yourself and again how you respond to the world. Another beautiful step here that brings it all together is you say keep a journal mm -hmm. and that's helpful it'll help you with your diet obviously because if you keep track of what you have eaten yeah. you'll see how all these bad things manifest themselves yeah. in your daily routine right. how easy they'd be to get out but also right. just in general mm -hmm. tracking progress helps yeah. keep a little plus and minus system and introspe introspection is such an important part of mm. being happy you know because the more we know ourselves the more we can accept ourselves the more we connect with other people so i say just journal for a minute uh you know five minutes a day, something like that, a page, three pages, and, and just ask yourself, what am I feeling now? Is this a common thread in my life? What could I have done d differently today? And just sort of track where you are emotionally, and that will really shift, because once you come to know yourself, you can see where the glitches are, and you can make the upgrades, and that shifts the way you are in life with other people. And there's the famous saying, we do not see the world the way it is, we see the world the way we are. Wonderful. So it's a good way of keeping yeah, track of yourself. That's Kathy it's a great book, thank really you. kind of a manual, but thank you for helping thank us. Thank you so much for having things. me. Pleasure, pleasure. And you can read an excerpt from the book at abcnews.com.